welcome to the Lincolnar number four on search syntax. And uh, again, I'm Swapna Biankar, and I'm the Associate Director for Content Development for LOINC. And we are glad to have you on the phone. Um, what we're going to do today is uh, just a quick introduction about why we're doing this Lincolnar um, top 10 search strategies, uh, which is probably more like top 20, and then um, lots of time for a Q&A at the end. So, Basically, why are we doing a link in our search strategies when, you know, we have a lot of materials out there um, for people to use and, you know, most people on the phone actually are, you know, very good searchers and link and link experts. So, um, you know, why are we doing this? And I guess one is uh, hopefully to save you some time. Two is to increase the accuracy of your search results because even if you're an expert linker, um, there's definitely some tips that are probably hidden in there that, uh, that you don't know about. And lastly, we are doing this link in order to give John Hook the credit he deserves for creating Rama and including so many great search strategies. And I'll be the first one to admit that a couple months ago, actually, I was helping update the Rama manual and I learned so much about different um, ways to search and ways to improve my searching. So he just deserves a huge amount of credit. And uh, anyway, so dedicating this link in order to him. So thank you, John. All right, so we're gonna start just with an example. So remember you do this every day, right? So searching in like is no different than searching from something else. So if I'm doing a search for this book, let's say I wanna find this book on Amazon. And this is actually one of my favorite books, so I recommend it to anybody who has not read it, or anybody who has kids or grandkids. So if you were looking for this book, Should I Share My Ice Cream by Mo Willems, would you look for ice cream, or would you look for something like Ice Cream Book Willems? Now we're to the ice cream uh, search in Amazon, so obviously this is not what I was looking for. But what I can do is go back up, look for Ice Cream Book, Willems, and then here um, I get my book. The point is that you wouldn't search for ice cream if you were looking a book for a book about ice cream by a particular author. You would actually search for ice cream book uh, Willems or something similar to that. Similar principle to um, looking for a lab test in LOINC. So let's say you're looking for a test to represent urine protein by test strip. Which search would you choose? Would you look for protein or would you look for protein urine test strip? And the point is that basically you should use the same search strategies that you look, use in other places um, in LOINC. And don't be intimidated by all of the codes because uh, you can use all of the search features to narrow down your results and get the one that you want. So I'm going to go through actually several um, examples of different fields that you can use and different ways you can narrow down your searches. And then at the end, I'm going to go ahead and show some examples in Realma of all of these, um, you know, different strategies. And then, like I said, we'll have plenty of time for questions. So the first principle is to use the available fields for inclusion or exclusion. And a lot of these um, search tactics that you can use in Realma are exactly the same on search.loink.org. And towards the end, I have a few slides that are specific for Realma only, but there's still some workarounds that you can also use. So examples of fields that you can use for inclusion and exclusion. Um, you can go to the hierarchy and search limits screen here in Realma. And then I've just zoomed in on the bottom uh, left corner of the screen, and two that I think are particularly useful are the exclude veterinary terms and exclude non-routine challenge tests. And, the, you know, by having these pre-checked, um, I think you will have um, a much better result when you're doing searching um, than, you know, than if they're not checked and you're getting everything back. And of course, you know, if you're looking for a challenge test that probably isn't routine, then of course you wouldn't check that box. Or if you're looking for veterinary terms, you wouldn't check that box. But you know, for most sort of general um, use cases for you know mapping a lab catalog to LOINC, um, I think it would be reasonable to have both of those checked. 
And then you can get a similar result in search.link.org by looking for veterinary and then either true or false and then non-routine challenge, true or false. That will get you the exact same results as these two checkboxes. Um, the second tip is using the uh, wildcard, the asterisk. And so this is a multi-character wildcard, and it can save you a lot of time if you're looking for uh, terms that are, you know, fairly long, take a while to type out, or um, also if you're not a great speller. So, for example, stru typing struct pneumo with the two stars at least for me, is faster and easier than typing streptococcus pneumonia, um, especially when I have to go back and correct my spelling multiple times when I'm typing out the whole name. Um, you can also look for uh, singular versus plural. So occasionally you might find terms where you look for the singular form and you don't find anything or you don't find what you expected, and then you look for the plural form, and then you actually find what, um, you know, what you're expecting. And in most cases, we have those uh, covered by synonyms, but there are cases when we don't, and so if you just add a star to the end of your search term, you'll be able to find both, so like leukocyte star. Um, another really helpful strategy is to use the major parts to narrow down the search. So instead of just putting in the search term, put in the search term in the field where you think that piece will be. So if it's something that's, uh, you know, going to be in the component, then use component colon. Um, we actually have a field for core component. So for example, if you're looking at a bunch of challenge tests and you're looking for a glucose challenge where uh, glucose is what's being measured, not what's being given as the challenge, then if you do core component colon glucose, uh, that will significantly narrow down your results. Um, similarly, you can narrow by property, timing, system, scale, and method. And sometimes it seems like the search terms, you know, are sort of specific enough so that, um, you know, you don't have to put the actual field in. But surprisingly, you know, it does actually make a big difference in a lot of cases. And so I have some examples over on the right side of the screen. So if you do a search for microstar, you get nearly 13,000 codes. But if you put in component in front of it, so you're looking for microstar in the component, then you get 536 codes. And similarly, um, if you put microstar in the method, then you get 598 codes. And so those are, um, you know, typically microscopy terms. And so you can see that just by putting in, you know, oh, I'm looking for micro in the component versus micro in the method, you can really, um, you know, narrow down your search results. Uh, same thing, so for white blood cells, you know, you might think, well, if I just look for white blood cells, that's you know, pretty specific, um, and I shouldn't have any trouble, but actually, if you just look for white blood cells, you get 1,189 results. But then, if you actually add system, um, you know, before that, so system colon white blood cells, you'll get 278 codes, which is much better than, you know, over 1,000. Or, if you're looking for white blood cells in the component, then you would just put component colon white blood cell. There's also plenty of other fields that you can take advantage of. So in addition to the six major parts, the link term, um, you can narrow down by the type of term. So, you know, the types one, two, three, and four, which are lab, clinical, attachments, and survey. So if you're only looking for lab terms, you can just say, you know, type colon one and just have that in the search field uh, at all times. The class is also a very helpful way of narrowing things down. Um, order observation is another ancillary field where you can type in um, order, observation, or both, and then you'll find the appropriate codes. If you're looking for terms with answer lists, you can type in answer list colon true or answer list colon false. And if you actually happen to know the answer list ID, then you can actually search by that as well. Um, you can also search by the type of answer list, um, as well as example units um, and mass property or substance property, and there's many more fields that you can search with, um, and they're described more in the Realma manual. And some of these, there's a little bit of overlap, so you'll see in a minute that, you know, for the mass and substance, um, there's actually a, um, a setting in Realma that you can use to do the same thing, but the nice thing is that by knowing some of these field names, you can actually use the same fields in search.link.org um, if you happen to be searching there. So moving on, so a little bit more specific now. So for the component, you always want to include the relevant details. So 
it would be very rare for somebody to be looking for long term for a test that just says HIV, right? So then, and if you were, then you wouldn't be able to find an appropriate code because you don't have enough information about that test name. So if you're looking for HIV-1 RNA, then type in the whole phrase HIV-1 RNA and you can get, you know, your 47 terms and narrow down from there. But if you type in just HIV, then you get 388 terms. Um, you can also narrow down by antigen versus antibody. Usually that information is available when you're mapping um, IgG versus IgM. In another area, like radiology, um, instead of just looking for, you know, chest x-ray, if you know that it's a chest x-ray with three views, then you can use the three views. Or you can use, you know, PA, if it's a PA view or a scoliosis view. So basically all of the detailed information that you have, you definitely want to include it in your search and that will greatly improve your search results. Um, same thing is still within radiology. So, you know, there's a lot of exams that are done with contrast uh, versus without contrast. And so you can actually specify that in the search and that should narrow down uh, your search results as well. And then again, don't forget about the core component in the search field. So if you do a search for core component colon contrast, you're going to get far fewer results than just looking for contrast. Um, so for the property and scale, this is also a great way to narrow down your results. Um, the scale will narrow them down um, somewhat, and then the property is very useful for narrowing down even more. So if you know that it's a quantitative result, then you know, then you can just put in con, QN, um, for scale. If you know that it's not quantitative, but you're not sure if it's ordinal or nominal, you could always do minus quan, and actually I'll get to the minus in a, um, in a couple minutes, but um, that's also a very handy way. If you're not exactly sure what it is, but you know what it isn't, then you can narrow down that way as well. And then just knowing how the units of measure and properties align um, is also very useful. And so if you know that your results for the test that you're uh, trying to represent in length are um, reported with milligrams per deciliter as the unit of measure, then you know it's a mass concentration term, and so the property will be MCNC. Um, similarly, if it's millimoles per gram, then that's a substance content term, so the property would be SCNT. And in the Link User's Guide, in one of the appendices, we actually have um, a lot of helpful information about the units of measure associated with various properties as well. So that's a, you know, that's a good place to look. And then also just looking at the example units when you do a search, that can help you figure out um, the right term as well. And then system and method. Um, so for both of these, you know, if you know the, what the system is, then put it in the search. And if you know what the method is, put it in the search. So if you look for glucose, you're gonna get 913 codes. But if you look for glucose and CSF, then you get 10 codes. Um, same thing with the method. If you look for Borrelia, you get 273. If you look for Borrelia with IB, which is immune block, then you get 136, which is still quite a bit, but you know, you can use other strategies to narrow the search results down more from there. Um, like I mentioned before, narrowing by class is also extremely useful. Um, and a lot of times people don't think about class because it's uh, not one of the, you know, primary six axes. And also in the search grid, it's usually over sort of off the screen, at least the way my search grid is configured. So sometimes I forget to look, but then, you know, if I do a search and there's way too many codes and not what I was expecting, then if you put in the class, then you can narrow it down. So one example is, you know, aspergillus. Um, if you look for aspergillus by itself, you get nearly 200 codes. But if you narrow it down by micro, like you're actually looking for antibodies or, you know, antigen for aspergillus, then you get 112, but if you're looking for allergy, then you get 66 codes. Um, same, you know, if you look for B antibody, there's over a thousand codes, but if you look for B antibody in the blood bank class, then you get 61 codes versus serology, you get 150. Um, so going back to the minus operator for a minute, which I know I showed a couple of slides back. So basically the minus operator subtracts the search results for what Ever comes right after the minus. So using the example that I gave a minute ago, if you search for contrast, you'll find um, 1,798 codes, uh, primarily in radiology, because we have a lot of codes, like for CT scans, with and without contrast. Um, but if you do a search for contrast minus 
class colon red, then you only get seven codes. And then um, one thing to keep in mind is that it, it, it that minus only applies to whatever phrase comes directly after it. So if you do a search for minus class colon rad contrast, then that still results in seven codes because the minus is only applying to uh, the class rad and not the contrast. Um, other operators are, are very useful. Well, they're not really operators, they're actually part of the term. So a plus and an ampersand. Um, one, it's really important to know the difference between the use of these two in Moink. And so just a refresher, uh, we use plus when you can't distinguish the elements that are on either side of the plus. And we use ampersand when the elements can be distinguished. So in my example for dengue virus, if you have the component on top, the one plus two plus three plus four RNA, um, that would be used for a test that can detect the RNA of any type of dengue virus, but it can't actually distinguish which one is there. But then if you have a test for dengue virus with the ampersands, then that assay actually can also detect all four types, but it can also tell you exactly which one is present. And so that's the key difference between the plus and the ampersand. And you can actually use that um, information to search. And so if you know, if you know oh, my assay uh, doesn't distinguish between the types one, two, three, and four, then you can do a search like dengue virus punctuation colon plus. And then you'll get exactly you know, the terms with one plus, two plus, three plus, four plus. Um, you know, and then the same inverse is that you can look for punctuation ampersand and I often have trouble spelling ampersand, so you can use uh, the wildcard strategy here, and you can just put in am star, and you'll get the same result. So this will only return the um, terms that have the ampersand somewhere in one of the parts. Um, parentheses are also very helpful, and especially if you're using um, a search with or. So if you're looking for something in one system or another system, or you're looking for one component or another component, you know, in a particular specimen, uh, then the, the parentheses come in really helpful, uh, handy. So, you know, one example is, let's say you're looking for the BRAF gene in either blood or bone marrow. So if you just type in blood, bone, BRAF, you get zero codes because it's looking for um, all three of these. Oh, and I forgot to mention that if you don't have uh, like an and or an or, the and is assumed. So when you have blood, bone, BRAF, that basically means blood and bone and BRAF. If you type in blood or bone BRAF, you get eight codes. But if you actually put the parentheses around blood or bone and then BRAF, then you get the three codes for the BRAF gene in either uh, blood or bone marrow. Um, so these next few screens are basically for uh, tricks in Realma only. And some of them have, you know, um, equivalents in search.loink that are close, but you know, not quite exactly the same search. And so I, I'll point those out too um, as we go through. Um, but one, you know, one thing that I find really useful in Noma is the right click menu. And so um, I just have a screenshot of that and I've circled the three things that I find really useful. So one is uh, configuring the grid, which I'll go into more detail in a second, uh, viewing the panel children, which I'll also demonstrate and then finding panels with the particular ones that are selected. And so the bottom two are kind of inverse of each other. So if you have a term that's a panel term and you want to see what children are in it, but you don't actually want to open the entire details page and you know wait for it to load all the information, you just want to see the list of links in that panel, then you can just click on view panel children and that will open up a new little window. And I'll show you that um, in a couple minutes. And then same with find panel uh, with all these loics. So let's say you have a particular term, you're wondering if it's in a panel. There's actually two different ways you can look for that. Um, one is to just right click and say find panel with all these loics or any of these loics. And if you have multiple ones selected, then that's where the all versus any becomes important. But then there's also another way to actually configure the grid so that you can actually see um, if a certain term is in a panel or not. So next screen, so this is the configure grid screen and you get to that again by right clicking and the fields that I think are really handy, uh, so depending on what you're doing is the answer list name, the panel parent name and the answers, uh, those three. And I'm 
pretty sure in the default that none of these three are actually included. Um, the other thing you can do on the screen is actually move, uh, you know, different columns um, to where you want them. So if you want to see the class right at the very beginning, you can actually just click on the class row and then click on move up. But you can also just drag in the main uh, in the main grid. The panel parent name will show the top level panel for each term that's in a panel, and that can be useful. You know, if you have a set of terms, and you're trying to figure out which one of these is in a particular panel, you can just scroll over to that column and you'll see uh, the panel information for the ones that are actually in a panel. Um, and then answer list name and answers will show this information as well for any term that's associated with an answer list. And that can be useful, you know, if you're not sure what the difference is between nom versus ord and the scale, and then, you know, you can just go over to the um, answers and you can see, oh, the ords are all associated with, you know, positive, negative, or detected, not detected. And the nominals are uh, associated with different types of results and not just the plus minus ones. Another feature in Realma um, is the limit results by method. And so the next few screens actually are pieces of what's in the hierarchy and search limits screen. And so this one is the one that's upper in the upper right corner. So you can see there's two choices. So there's exclude method specific terms. And then there's return method specific terms when no methodless term exists. And this is one of the new things I learned about when I was um, looking at the Roma manual a couple months ago. So, you know, one, you can exclude the method specific terms and you can do that in um, the web search as well, just by saying, you know, method true or method false. Um, and you can also use actually uh, null or not null as well, um, instead of true and false. But what the web version doesn't do is what the second checkbox does in Rama. And so if you have exclude method specific terms checked, then, you know, you're just going to get uh, results for terms that don't have a method in link. But if you also check the second box, then if there is no methodless code, you'll get the specific method ones. Um, and I think that's really useful. You know, if in general you're looking for methodless codes, but for a particular test there aren't any, then it's nice to see what the method specific codes are and not just get a null result basically. Um, and just again, the search.link.org, you know, you can do the method or no method, but you can't do the return method specific terms if no methodless terms exist option. Um, another realm only feature is favoring uh, mass concentration or, you know, mass properties or substance properties. And so um, this is sort of in the middle of the right side of that same hierarchy and search limit screen. And the default is favor neither, but you can actually set it to favor mass terms when possible and favor substance terms when possible. And this is similar to the uh, method specific term limit where, you know, the key is that it says when possible. So if you're looking for a term and there is no term with a mass property, then it will return the substance property or, you know, whatever other uh, property like presence or uh, type, um, you know, whatever is relevant for that search term. But if there are um, terms with mass properties, then it will only return those. And so um, on search.link.org, you know, similar to the method, you can look for mass property is true or false or substance property is true or false. So those are the inverse of each other, basically. Um, but they don't include the when possible um, type clause. So, you know, if you say mass property true, then if there is no code with a mass property, then you're just going to get a zero result. You're not going to get the substance property terms. Um, another great trick is on the, um, in Realma, when you're looking at the details pages, you can actually put in a code. So if you know the, you know, the next code that you want to look at the details for, instead of going back to the search screen and then, you know, typing in the code and then pulling up the details, you can actually put them directly in this little uh, box down at the bottom of the page on the, um, on the details screen. And then you don't have to go to the extra step of going back and doing the search again and pulling it back up. So uh, that's pretty handy if you happen to know the line code already. All right, so putting it all together, and sorry, I know talking extremely fast, but um, hopefully everybody's following along. And so what I wanted to do was just to go to Realma and go through a few searches. So 
um, let's say you were looking for um, you know a urine glucose blank code and you know that the results are reported in milligrams per deciliter and that's all the information you have so you could start just by looking for glucose or looking for urine glucose but I think a really important thing um, and one that would be very helpful is to actually exclude the non-routine challenge tests and we had talked about that and I think that's actually the default setting in Rama is to automatically exclude the non-routine challenge tests but if you look at your hierarchy and search limits screen and this little last box is not checked, I would definitely go ahead and uh, check it unless you know unless you happen to be mapping um, some non-routine challenges, of course. Then once it's mapped, I mean once it's checked, you can go back to your search screen and you know you can just look, type in urine glucose and you still get a fair number of results, but you know it's not completely overwhelming and then you can just narrow down by the property. So if you know it's milligrams per deciliter, then that's a mass concentration. So you can just type in NCNC and then you're down to five codes. And you know, they're different in terms of, well, there's a few that have a method and there's you know one that has a 24 hour urine uh, timing and there's one that has the XXX for timing. But this is a much more manageable set than if you had started with a search for urine glucose and CNC without having that um, non-routine challenge uh, limit set. Um, another example is, uh, let's say you're looking for an HIV-1 uh, viral load expressed as log copies per milliliter. Um, so you can actually start by just typing in, you know, HIV-1 RNA load NCNC, because you know it's in copies um, and not in units. So you type that in, you know, you still get a fair number of results, but then if you look at the uh, units of measure, you can see, oh yeah, you know, these have log copies per mil, and that's what um, my test results uh, have as well. So it looks like the property for those is L and C and C for log. So then actually, if you just add the L, um, then you, you know, you narrow down your results. Um, and again, you know, you could have added CSF or serum, or if you had a specific, specific detection limit, um, then you can certainly add all that information. But sometimes I think it's better rather to end up with, you know, five or six or 10 codes from which you can pick the right one than just finding one, because that sometimes I worry that, you know, maybe that's too restrictive and I didn't get the exact result that I want because I put in too many search terms. So sometimes I try to, you know, go back one step and see um, what the results are that I got and then pick the one appropriate one from there. Um, and then I just want to show you a couple more examples. So let's say we were looking for, uh, you know, Borrelia, so Lyme disease, um, IgG and IgM test. So you can type in Borrelia, IgG, IgM, and you get these, you know, the set of results. So these are all the tests that include both IgG and IgM. But let's say you only wanted the ones that had the plus. So again, the plus is where uh, IgG and IgM would not be distinguished from each other. You could actually put in uh, punctuation plus, and you would actually get the same result even if you took out IgG and IgM. Um, and so you can see that you know you get basically similar results. You also get these extra few in here. Uh, when you took out the IgG, IgM, because uh, it brought in other uh, species and, you know, because the plus is in between the species names rather than the IgG and IgM. Um, but once you do a few searches using these different tricks, then you can sort of, you can figure out which ones work better than others, depending on what exactly you're looking for. Um, and then you can also see, I just want to point out a couple of things. So if you scroll over here to the right, you can see the column for the parent panel name. And so you can actually sort by that. So if you want to just look at all of the blanks that are in a panel, um, you know, you can sort by that column. And then here's the column with the uh, answers. So you can see all of these must be ordinal because they're all, you know, essentially positive, negative, or detected, not detected. And then 
over here, you have the name of the answer list. Um, and I just haven't put those two close together, but sometimes I like having the answer list name a little bit closer to the front so that it's, uh, it's faster to find. Oops. All right, and then I just have one more example. So let's say you're looking for any strep tests that are in HEDIS panels. So what you can do is you can look for, you know, streptococcus. Um, or, sorry, let me back up one step. So what you could have done is you could have looked for any panels with the name HEDIS in them and then looked at each specific panel to see if it had strep tests in it. But an easier way is actually to, you know, just do sort of the general search. Then you can go over to the panel parents. And again, if you sort by that, um, then you can see, okay, when you look for streptococcus, there's this one up here, this is 2017. And then there's all these other ones as well, um, you know, going back over the years. So that's, you know, a quick way to find out, you know, how the codes have changed over time in terms of what's contained in the panels. The other thing you can do is, uh, like I mentioned before, you can actually look at which codes are included in a particular panel. So here, you know, we have this HEDIS 2013 panel, and you can right click and say view panel children. And then that basically just pulls up the screen that has all the panel children, and then you don't have to wait for the details pages to load if all you really want to know is, you know, which is a certain code in here or which codes are in here, and you don't need all the details about each term. And then um, similarly, um, you know, when you're looking for codes that are in a particular panel, like I said, you can go over and look at the parent panel name. But the other thing you can do um, is you can, you know, right click and you can say find panels with all these links or any of these links. And then if it's in a panel, it will come up uh, right here. So this particular term happens to be in this ENT microorganism. Uh, gene identification panel, um, but if it wasn't in any panels, then it would just be blank. All right, so I think those are all the examples that I had, but I have one last slide. So this might actually be my favorite, uh, my favorite search strategy. So it's the question mark. So the question mark is also a wild card. It's very similar to the asterisk, but it's only good for a single character. So, for example, if you're looking for uh, terms with, you know, various uh, for format forms of hemoglobin, of the word hemoglobin in them, you could look for a hemoglobin star, and that would find hemoglobin, hemoglobins, hemoglobinopathies, et cetera. And if you looked for hemoglobin question mark, that would only find hemoglobin because it's just, uh, it's looking for another, uh, for any character, rather, in that one particular space. So you might wonder, well, what, you know, that doesn't sound very useful. Why is that useful? The way that I use it is if you're looking for a link code, and so you have it in your head, okay, it's, you know, it's 10317, and then you can't remember the check digit. So then either you go back to the other screen, you have to find the check digit, go back, put the check digit in, or you can actually just use the question mark, and I use that many times a day because I can't seem to remember the check digit. So just to show you that in Roma, so here it is, it's 103.17-6, which is the vendor serial number, and I actually just picked that because it's today's date, 10 3 17. Um, but anyway, I think that's an extremely useful uh, trick, so one that I really like. And I think um, that was it. So I'm happy to answer any questions or go back to Realma or we can look at search.link.org and, you know, try to do different searches. Um, I would be happy to, you know, to do any of those things. Oh, hi. Uh, first of all, really thank you for the webinar. Uh, oh. So my question was, I mean, just out of curiosity, I mean, everything is very pretty clear. There is no problem. Uh, but just out of curiosity, I was uh, looking at 
uh, is there any standard followed for providing this, this search mechanism meaning of every uh, search attributes for example you are using wild characters ampersand plus and other signs for the significance uh, LSB, MSB and other stuff so is there any standard used or it is being developed at Loink itself? So I'm pretty sure and actually I think uh, um, John I think you're on the call but I'm pretty sure um, all of the syntax is based on Lucene so um, the Lucene searches I think are you know use all of these various characters and you can set the fields and things like that uh, yes, Swapna, you're exactly right. The uh, the search syntax is all based on Lucene, which you can easily find with a Google search. It's the field names uh, where we add the values. We create all the particular field names and uh, and populate the content. But the actual you know asterisk and question mark and that syntax is all based on Lucene. Uh, one more question, actually. Um, you said that is implemented in Realma, but uh, is there any uh, is there an API available where we get the Loink files and we can, you know, use these APIs for integration in application or somewhere? So we don't have an actual API, but you can download the Loink files from our website. So you can download a table, and we have many accessory files. Um, and then we also have the search.loink.org where uh, you can do searches, but at this point, we don't have, um, you know, we don't have an API where you can just make a call to the, you know, to the application. Okay. And any source code available, uh, you know, in which is in behind being used by Realma? No, no, the source code for Realma is not open source and we do not make it available. Okay. Thank you. Um, so now we have another question. Okay. Is there a way to copy a Loink code in Realma without double clicking and opening the page? <laughs> you know, that's a great question. And if there is, I have not figured it out because I do that a lot. Um, and actually, that may be another question for John. So, is there a way? So, right. So, typically, what I do is I open the details page and then I copy it here, which is probably exactly what um, the person who asked the question is doing. I don't know of any way just to copy it from here. Try using Control C. That copies the entire row. Oh, Not yeah, that does copy the entire row. Yeah, yeah. I guess you could type it in here. You just want the white code. Yeah, <laughs> you could copy it from here. Actually, I never thought of that. So let's see. I'm just gonna go to the slide and paste it in. Yeah. Okay. So that works. So you can do it from. You know, I mean, it's sort of silly, but you can do it from the search window itself, but otherwise you have to go into the actual details. Yeah, and it is a great suggestion. So if you're searching on the, you know, very generic thing of glucose um, and you have a whole bunch of link codes, but you just want to copy one of them. Um, it is, you know, uh, we appreciate any suggestions, you know, as far as making searches or using Realma easier um, and the online search, um, you making that easier. So feel free to send us any suggestions? Yeah, you know, and actually, Jamie, that reminds me, if you're online, you can actually search, I mean, sorry, copy the code. So you can't in Realma, but, um, you know, go back and check it again, so I'll just use that. So you can actually copy it here, um, and that works. So if you, you know, if you happen to be near a browser, that's also one workaround. I think it also copies the link as well, is that correct? Yeah, let me go into the slideshow again. We can try it out. Yep, that takes you right to the details page. All right, um, any other questions at all? Questions or comments? The other thing that I'll say is that um, uh, we're gonna try to put some of the um, documentation around the searching in Roma. We're gonna try to pull some of that out and make it available on search.link.org as well, since most of the search strategies work in both places. Um, so we're going to try to improve the documentation for that. Um, it's just Pam saying that it was very informative. Thanks, Pam. Um, and she has her new favorites to try. So. Oh, excellent. You know what, Pam, if you don't <laughs> mind, can, would you mind, because um, I was wondering, actually, if there would be anything new 
in the session for you know for expert learners out there. So I'm curious about what new things you might have picked up or what your new favorite might be to try. Um, so the punctuation colon search, I had not thought of doing that. I had only I just recently started doing like um, from attribute colon to do uh -huh. as a delimiter in there. Um, so there was that one. And then being able to view um, the children of a, a, a group from a, that single right click, I really like that. Let's see, there was a couple more, but I'm drawing a blank since you called me out. <laughs> um, I wondered on the, if you were to go and copy from your search.loink.org, uh, and when you go to paste it someplace, if you didn't want that hyperlink, could you do some sort of a special paste, you know, yes. um, at the yep. formatting thing? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah. There you go. Okay. Yep. Yeah, exactly. Like, so, right, depending on what you're okay. using, you might want it one way or the other. No, I Thank thought it was really good. Um, I haven't really been uh, successful with the question mark yet, but I see that's for a single character and not necessarily where well, the asterisk is for everything. Exactly. And, you know, the only place I use it is when I can't remember the check digit, uh, which is pretty often. Plot, <laughs> <laughs> well, I have to say it's impressive that you remember the first part of the line code. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even do that. <laughs> uh, I think you're supposed to be able to remember seven digits, but I think I, I stumble when I get to the dash. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, if there's nothing else, uh, I guess we could end a little bit early. And thank you, everyone, for tuning in. Thank you very much. You're welcome. And if you have any thank questions you. later, you can just email us as well. <laughs>